Okay, we're live on YouTube. Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Rayo from the home base here in uh, Putnam County. And uh, as you can see behind me, uh, lots of stuff up on the walls here and right above my head, a picture of a, an eclipse of the sun that took place in uh, Montana back in 1945. People were pinging me a little while ago or yesterday and asking me about, you know, what what all this stuff was. So there, there you go. Now you got your answer. Anyway, we're going to uh, talk about a few things tonight. We're going to talk about the uh, the meteor shower that uh, many of you did not see, mainly because of the weather. We're also going to be talking about um, uh, the weather for this upcoming weekend and, of course, for Getaway Wednesday and Thanksgiving Thursday. Let's talk about, first of all, the meteor shower. And for those of you who were kind of sad that you had cloud-filled skies and couldn't see anything, well, guess what? You didn't really miss very much because from a visual standpoint, the meteor display last night, I won't say it was a dud. There were meteors out there, but they, instead of coming down at the rate of a few dozen uh, during the course of a few minutes, we had reports of meteor rates of anywhere from five to maybe 15 per hour. A couple of people actually saw some really outstandingly bright shooting stars, but in terms of enumeration or in terms of intensity, not very much to write home about at all. Um, on radio, and uh, I did post on my Facebook page uh, last evening <clears throat> a link to a site that actually allows you to listen to meteors. He uh, said, how can you listen to a shooting star? How can you listen to a meteor? And it's done frequently by ham radio operators. You see, when a meteor streaks across our sky, they're about 60 to 80 miles up in space, uh, the particle that is rubbing up against the atmosphere leaves behind a trail of incandescent gas, ionized gas, which ham radio operators sometimes use to bounce radio signals off of that trail. They sometimes can, on, on certain radio frequencies, um, because of the curvature of the earth, you, you can't, you know, transmit much more than a few hundred miles. Some ham radio operators transmit for many hundreds of miles, even more than a thousand miles, by using the trails from meteors. What they do is if a meteor, a very bright meteor appears, and they set up a schedule in advance with somebody, let's say a, a person, a ham radio operator is like 800 miles away, and then they wait for a night when they know there are going to be a lot of meteors during one of the major meteor showers of the year, like the Perseids in August, the Geminids in December, and then what they do is they uh, they set a schedule up, and they, they start transmitting. And most of the time, you know, you, you transmit to a, to a person 800 miles away, that guy, that person is not going to hear you because simply because it, uh, the, the curvature of the earth and radio transmission won't allow it. But if there's a meteor appearing in the sky, you can bounce that signal off of the trail of the meteor, and that signal will then bounce all the way out much further than what you, you would uh, get if you didn't have a meteor bouncing that signal off at all. And so that's what was happening last night. <clears throat> there was a transmitting station in... Uh, Washington, D.C., and they were in communication with another station up in, up in Ontario, Canada. And every time a meteor appeared, uh, you could hear on this particular website, something sounded like a ping or a pong. And sometimes when there was a really bright meteor leaving a very long, distinct trail, um, you ended up with a very loud whistle of sorts, which lasted for many, many seconds. So I was monitoring that frequency, that uh, site last night, that website, and I was seeing meteors coming at a fairly good clip. The problem was a lot of these meteors that were appearing on the screen of what I was hearing probably were not large enough to make much of a splash in the sky. So um, whereas I actually counted over 300 pings, pongs, and whistles over the span of an hour's time from uh, uh, 11.30 to 12.30 last night, while I was hearing a lot of, you know, distinct radio echoes or radio, radio echoes from meteors, uh, the people who had clear weather weren't seeing all that much. They were seeing a few very bright meteors, but a lot of the meteors probably were not visible, maybe in part because they didn't have um, very good uh, sky conditions. You know, there's a lot of light pollution out there. You don't see as much in the sky now as you might have seen, let's say, you know, 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. Um but, you know, that's the way things go sometimes with astronomy. Anyway, the uh, next time we'll have a really good shower, unfortunately, uh, is the Geminids. And I say unfortunately because it's coming in December.
but it's coming on the night of a full moon. So the full moon is going to more or less blot out all but the brightest meteors. There's another shower in early January, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about that when, it, you know, when we get close to the time or when it comes around. Problem with that one is if you want to see that one well, you're going to have to get up real early, like a four or five o'clock in the morning, because that's when the meteors are expected to be at their best. So if you're a night owl or if you're somebody who's up before the crack of dawn, uh, check it out uh, early on, uh, I think it's the morning of January 4th. But we'll talk more about that as we get closer uh, to that event. Anyway, let's uh, talk about um, the weather situation um, coming our way this weekend. Looks like we got a 50-50 weekend ahead of us. We have um, a dry day on Saturday and then a very wet Saturday night into at least the first part of Sunday. In fact, most of Sunday looks to be rather wet as well. Out there right now, it's rather brisk. It's rather chilling with that gusty wind, and we have skies that have become mostly clear. And when this night is over, when we get to tomorrow morning, I'm thinking that the temperatures tomorrow morning are going to be somewhere between 23 in the valley spots up to the north and west to 33 along coastal areas and urban locales. So if you're watching, let's say, in Yonkers or Mount Vernon or maybe right down by the water's edge, Mamaroneck, Rye, I'm talking now for <clears throat> the Hudson Valley proper. Um, you're going to find temperatures tonight mostly in the 20s to the lower 30s. Tomorrow, as I said, bright and sunny. Should be a great day overall, although it will not be as balmy as what we had earlier today. Early today, we had temperatures that were at or above 50. Felt rather nice in spite of the fact we had some wetness here in the form of showers in the midday hours. But now, tomorrow... I'm thinking temperatures will be in the 40s to maybe near 50. There won't be as much wind as we have now or what we had earlier on in the afternoon, but it looks like uh, we're in for a dry day. Now, later on in the day tomorrow, from the west, you'll start noticing some high, thin clouds, which will continue to increase, continue to lower, continue to thicken as we move into tomorrow night. And then probably sometime between about 8 and 10 o'clock tomorrow night, or 8 and 11 o'clock tomorrow night, it's going to start to precipitate. Now, for most of you, this precipitation is going to be in the form of rain. If you're watching in a spot, let's say, to the north, let's say north of Interstate 84, and Interstate 84 covers northern sections of uh, Orange County and uh, across portions of southern uh, Dutchess County and northeastern sections of Putnam County, if you're north of that corridor, if you're north of that interstate line, you will find yourself with the possibility initially of a touch of sleet, ice, or freezing rain. Those temperatures tomorrow evening will probably be hovering precariously close to the freezing mark up there. Most everywhere else, it'll be above freezing. And even in the places where there is a bit of frozen precipitation, that precip is going to change right over to plain rain uh, very quickly uh, during the first part of tomorrow night. Then after midnight tomorrow night, till about noontime on Sunday, I'm thinking we're going to see rain, and at times rain that will be coming down rather heavily, rain that could uh, be accompanied by areas of patchy fog, and rain that tomorrow night may actually be accompanied by a slow rise in the temperature. Temperatures may actually go up a little bit in the after midnight hours tomorrow night. As I said, readings tomorrow night will be in the 30s to near 40, but when you wake up on uh, Sunday morning, they may actually be in many places at or above 40 degrees. Sunday, a wet start. Looks like it'll still be rather rainy, rather foggy at least through noontime, and then in the afternoon on uh, on Sunday, we're expecting that rain to peter out or gradually diminish, and it should be over, said, and done, I think, by either late in the day on Sunday or certainly by Sunday evening. Temperatures on Sunday should climb into the 40s, 41 uh, to 47 degrees, and then as we get on into early next week, after the weekend is over, things should dry out. Now, if you're going to be out and about from midnight tomorrow night, to midday on Sunday, be advised, again, spurts of moderate to heavy rain, and I'm thinking that we may see anywhere from, <clears throat> excuse me, a grand total of anywhere from one to one and a half inches of rain compressed in that 12-hour interval. And again, the heaviest rain coming after midnight tomorrow night into the first part of Sunday. So if you're going to be out and about on the roadways late night tomorrow night or during the first part of Sunday, be extra careful because of that a dose of uh, heavy rainfall that we're anticipating. Then as we get on into Monday, I'm thinking that we're going to have lots of sunshine. Temperatures will be back up in the upper 40s to near 50. 
Sunshine giving way to clouds late on Tuesday. Temperatures on Tuesday should jump into the low and mid 50s. So milder weather on the way for Tuesday. Now we come to Wednesday. And Wednesday will be a day where we're going to be watching a cold front, a sharp cold front moving in from the west. That cold front is likely to generate a couple of showers, uh, especially from the late morning into the early afternoon on Wednesday. I'm not thinking, quite frankly, I'm not thinking that we're going to see a whole heck of a lot of rain on Wednesday. Uh, it, it looked a few days ago like we might see a pretty good you know, surge or dousing of rain on Wednesday. But right now, I'm thinking no more than maybe a couple of tenths of an inch. So no big deal on Wednesday. Uh, temperatures will be, as I said, warming up by midweek. I think on Wednesday, at least in the Hudson Valley, we may be looking at temperatures of something like 52 to 57 degrees. That's pretty darn good, considering that the normal high temperature, again, in the Hudson Valley is around 48. So, but no matter where you are, be it the Hudson Valley, Long Island, New Jersey, Connecticut, I'm thinking the temperatures are going to be above normal Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. But again, this is a sharp cold front that's going to be moving into and through our area during the midday and afternoon on Wednesday. And once the front passes on by, watch out. That wind is going to start revving up real fast later Wednesday, Wednesday night, and on into Thursday. Now, this is going to become a problematic situation in regard to the inflation, the blowing up of the big balloons for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on Thursday. They usually do that inflation right in front of the Museum of Natural History on West 81st Street. But the question is going to be, how strong are those winds going to be? I personally think that on Wednesday, we could see the wind start gusting past 30 miles an hour. And Wednesday night into most of the day on Thanksgiving Thursday, we could be looking at winds in excess of 40 to maybe even approaching 50 miles per hour in gusts. That is not good news when you're trying to uh, inflate and handle these huge balloons that are, what, on the order of, what, 20, 30, 40 feet high? And uh, sometimes when they, in past years, when the winds have been pretty gusty, you know, I'm talking about 20 to 30 miles an hour, they've managed to pull those balloons down where they're almost, you know, only 10 or 15 feet above the street level. That's what they do to, you know, work against the uh, strong wind gusts. But quite frankly, I don't know what they're going to do if the winds gust past, let's say, 40 miles an hour. Now, only once, at least in my memory, have they ever completely canceled the, uh, the balloons from participating in the parade. That was a big storm, a coastal storm. Some of you who are uh, weather buffs can look it up in your uh, weather books or textbooks or whatever. It was uh, November the 25th, 1971. Big storm in New York City. They had some rain, gusty winds to over 40 miles an hour. Up north and west of the city, there was some slushy snow. I think something on the order of two, three, four inches. But it was a weather pattern that just did not allow for the balloons to... Uh, I, I'm not sure if they even inflated the balloons. If they did inflate them, they certainly didn't run them down uh, during the parade on uh, that particular Thanksgiving in 1971. We might be looking, sadly, at a very similar scenario, not in terms of precipitation. Believe it or not, in my view right now, Thanksgiving is going to be a beautiful blue sky, sunny day. Temperatures are going to be chilly. Readings will be probably no better, I think, right now than the low to mid 40s. We might be looking at temperatures of 40 to 45 on uh, Thanksgiving afternoon. Factor those winds in, it'll probably feel more like upper 20s and lower 30s. That's, that's going to be hard enough to negotiate holding on to the to the cables or the rope that uh, are attached to those balloons. I feel sorry, feel bad for those people who have to uh, do that on this particular upcoming uh, Thanksgiving. I think the employees from Macy's are the ones that do that. They sign up, and it, I'm sure it's 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 you know a nice thing to do. Uh, you probably say, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's participate in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah, I'll handle those balloons. Ain't going to be fun on Thursday if they do fly those balloons uh, with the wind and the cold temperatures. But at least it'll be bright and sunny as opposed to back in 71 when we had clouds, wind, rain, and again, north and west of the city, slushy snow. So we'll see how this all pans out. We'll certainly be looking more at this as we get closer to the event 
um, Wednesday night and on into Thursday. And again, Wednesday, big travel day, but I don't think um, we need be concerned about the fact that we're going to have uh, a couple of tenths of an inch of rain. No big rainfall or rainstorm on Wednesday. The thing, again, to put the emphasis on on Wednesday for us will be the wind later Wednesday and on into Thursday. Then beyond that, let's see, Black Friday, um, pretty chilly, only around 40. It'll still be rather breezy as well. So whereas we might be looking at wind gusts of over 40 miles an hour on Thanksgiving Day, the winds will have died off some, but still rather brisk, around 20 or 25, I think, mile per hour winds on uh, Black Friday. So that looks pretty much like the story for Friday and Thursday, lots of sunshine uh, over the weekend, not this weekend, but next weekend, I think the, another weather disturbance is going to be approaching, probably clouding our skies up on Saturday, and then maybe some more wet stuff here later Saturday into not this Sunday, but next Sunday. That's not this weekend I'm talking about, but the weekend beyond uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Again, we'll see how it all pans out, but that's uh, a look right now at what I think the weather prospects are for the next uh, seven days ahead. Let's take a look at some of the people who are online here with us tonight. We have Stephen Franco. We have Timothy Veltman. David Schwartz is online. We also have Jimmy Z, New Jersey, or Jimmy Z NY. How are you doing, all you folks out there? Nice to have you tonight. Dennis Cassia. Dennis, he was one of the people who actually had a bit of clear weather last night while he was looking for those meteors. But even though that patch of clear weather passed overhead, he didn't see anything, which, again, goes back to what I was saying earlier, that while there were probably meteors falling, probably, come in here, come over here, come over here. I want to introduce you to my my son, the 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 uh, physics professor, uh, or the physics uh, teacher. Say hello. Hello, everybody out there in Weatherland. <laughs> Joe Rayo here with another Joe Rayo, and we're just hey, here to I, say. I just realized something. We've got the Joe and Joe show tonight, Joe Sr. and Joe Jr. Anything you want to say about the weather or? Oh, it's lousy outside right now. Well, it's lousy because it's windy. It's extremely windy. And cold. It's cold and it's windy. But it's clear. Yeah, I hear that uh, the balloons might not fly next week. Is this true? Uh, that's what we've been talking about for the last oh, few minutes. Geez. Well, I hope the balloons fly next week, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I've got to get home. So, ta-ta and till next time. My son is a high school physics teacher, and he's going to have the good fortune to marrying a very lovely lady next July who happens to be a Harvard graduate and a chemistry teacher in Lower West Virginia. It's a, it's a, it's one a, of the best, mind you. Mind you, yes, indeed. It's a match made in physical science heaven, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, well, anyway, you go now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I was talking about Dennis. Dennis Cassia. Uh, he's online. He was looking for uh, meteors last night. There was a clear spot in the sky. And he didn't see anything. So these meteors I was hearing on the radio were probably a bit on the tiny side, a little too tiny to make a really big splash or big streak in the sky. So what are you going to do? That's what happens sometimes. Let's see. Who else is up there? We have Chris. We have Jimmy and Jimmy Z and, and Jay. We have uh, Nashia. That, that's not Natasha. That's Nashia. Nashia Musa. Hi, everyone. Nice to have you here tonight, Nashia. And um, who else is here? Um, ba, 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 ba. Al K. Hi, Al. Hey, Al, are you special? Special K? That's what we ought to call Al K from now on. Special K, Al. Ha! And uh, let's see. Nashia Musa. Close. All right. Unfortunately, Na let me let me see. Nashla. Nashla Musa. Is that is that correct, Nash Nashla? Well, anyway. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see anybody else here online. Howard Vanderhoff. Doing well, Joe. How are you? Well, were you talking to my son or were you talking to me? I'm doing just fine right now. Um, David Schwartz, you know there's a helium shortage. I wonder if they would switch to hydrogen for the balloons or is there too much of a fire risk with them? <laughs> um, I think the very reason why they're using helium and not, not hydrogen anymore, uh, I think there was this big what do they call it, a blimp or an airship back in 1937 that uh, they had a little accident because they were using hydrogen? Oh, the humanity. All right. Um, anyway, uh, I've gone just about as long as I think I'm going to go. We're going about coming up on 20 minutes here. 
it would probably be worth my while if I begin to learn how to use uh, OBS so I can actually put some maps up there so that all of you can uh, uh, see some maps while I'm talking about them. But uh, for the moment, uh, all you have is me and the background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close and uh, close this down right now. And I thank all of you for watching. Now, once again, uh, for those of you who are not subscribers, subscribe to Joe Rayo Weather at YouTube. Um, it's very, very easy. And uh, once you do, you, you'll get uh, uh, notice as to uh, when these uh, shows are going to be aired. And uh, I just like to have as many people as possible. Um, I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to attain the same mark that my uh, cohort and colleague, Mr. Chiaffi, has in, on his uh, channel. But we can always give it the good old college try, right? All right. So we will uh, be back. I'm not sure exactly when we might do another uh, telecast here, either on YouTube or on Facebook. It might be over the weekend uh, or might not be until the beginning of next week. We'll make that judgment call or decision, and we'll let all of you know uh, pretty well in advance. In the meantime, thanks very, very much. Um, Christopher Alley. Hi, Chris. Great show. Everyone here, have a safe and great evening. I will uh, say the same thing to everybody. Teresa, thank you. Teresa Rosada, you subscribe. Dennis, you have a good night, too. Digger310, thank you, Digger, for, for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Howard Vanderhoff, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah, like I'm going to get the thousands of people to watch Chiaffi in less than 24 hours, right? You're absolutely right. Rome was not built in a day, but again, we'll give it the good old college try. So spread the word. Subscribe to Joe Rayo Weather on YouTube. Have a good weekend, everybody, and we'll see you real soon.